Hi, I'm Dennis Phillips, and welcome to Everyday Reloading and Shooting. Okay, for this test, I'll be comparing two different powders with 6.5 Creedmoor. I've loaded 50 rounds of Hornady 140 grain ELD match bullets I'm using three times fired Lapua brass, and we'll be using Federal Gold Metal AR match primers. So I have loaded these for the Varget with charge weights from 32.7 to 36.4 and Hodgson's H4350 I've loaded from 35.6 to 39.6 and the way these are loaded these are loaded based on velocity shown in the manual so on this first one with Varget at 32.7 and Hodgson at 35.6 these both are supposed to generate velocities of 2400 feet per second then we've got these loaded to shoot 2450 feet per second, 2500, 2550, and topping out at 2600 feet per second. The point of this is to compare the two powders to see which ones group best and at which velocities. All right, so here I'm shooting a 6.5 Creedmoor, and I'm testing two different powders. I've got Hodgson's H4350 and I've got Varget powder and I have loads that are rated from 2400 to 2600 feet per second. The charge weights on the powders are different but that's in order to achieve similar velocities according to what's rated in the book. So we're only going to 2600 feet per second with the H4350 powder I've actually had better results with hotter loads but the Varget is only rated up to 2600 feet per second at 36.4 grams of powder. The uh, H4350 will be 39.6 grains of powder. And I've had better results with some heavier charge weights, but this is for comparison purposes only. So we're going to be comparing the, the velocities at 2400, 2450, 25, 2550, and 2600 feet per second. So we will shoot these at 100 yards to see how they perform. You are welcome to enjoy the music while I fast forward through my shooting, or you can skip forward to the results just after. That target at the bottom is for my warming shot and also to zero the scope. Alright, these are not the best boots I've shot with this rifle, but let's bring them in and take a look and see how we did. Alright, 
All right, so that was my barrel warming shot. And to make sure the rifle was zeroed. So here's the rest of the groups and how they performed. Pretty tight here with a the flyer there. Again, pretty tight with a flyer there. Tight there with a flyer. A little scattered. A little scattered. A little scattered. Pretty tight grouping here. Not too bad here. We got a flyer there. Pretty tight here. Four out of five there looks pretty good with a flyer there. So I notice in this case it starts out that we're shooting even and maybe even a little bit low. But the H4350 is shooting higher. So here we're kind of on center but high here. These shoot very similarly. And these are pretty similar except the 4350 is a little bit higher. So I felt a little more punch when I pulled the trigger on that H4350. So I think it probably has a little more velocity, a little more hump to it than the Varget. But we will take them home, measure them, compare, and see how they performed. All right, so we're comparing the Varget and the H4350 powder. So right off the bat, one of the first things I realized in shooting these, when I pulled the trigger on the H4350, there was a little more humph behind that. So... Even though the book shows both of these charge weights, they're different, but the book shows this to be the correct charge weight for these velocities, and I'm shooting from 2400 to 2600 feet per second. And so if you look, I've drawn a red line from the highest bullet point on each of these for both the H4350 and the Varget. And as you can see, the H4350 shot higher than the Varget powder on every one of these. So that tells me right off the bat that there's a difference in the velocity. So this is what the book shows, but in reality, I suspect probably the H4350 is hitting a little bit harder Okay, so on the burn chart, there are 170 powders rated number 1 through 170. These powders are rated from fastest, fastest to slowest. Varget is number 107 on the scale, and H4350 is number 133. So it is a much slower powder. There are numerous other powders in between that are very popular. Uh, the Accurate 2520, BLC2, CFE223, Big Game Powder, Stay Ball, Alliant RL16. And that slower burning powder is going to create higher pressures, which is going to increase the velocity of that bullet. So that explains the difference in the elevation of the bullet, how that they're shooting high for the H4350, but they're shooting more on target for the Varget powders. These are probably closer to the actual rated velocity than the H4350. And of course, when these powders are tested, they're shot out of uh, guns with barrel lengths and actions, which are different from the ones that we're shooting out of. So it's all relative. You really don't know without a chronograph. But in any event, um, at 2,400 feet per second, with the Varget powder, we had 32.7 grains. At the H4350, we had 35.6. Our overall group size was 1.27 for Varget, 0.96 for the 4350. Our best 4 out of 5 was 0.71 on Varget, 0.56 on H4350. So H4350 shot a little better at that particular velocity, assuming that's accurate. 
At 2450 feet per second, we had charge weights of 33.6, Varget 36.6, H4350, three grains higher. The Varget grouped at 0.93, the H4350 grouped at 1.30, and that's probably primarily because we had a flyer out here. But other than that, our best four out of five was an inch. But over here with the Varget, our best four out of five was 0.41 inches. So that may be an area where we need to zero in, maybe load a little before, maybe a little higher, a little below, a little above, and see if we can find a load there. At um, 2,500 feet per second at 34 and a half grains of Varget and 37.6 of H4350, we had group sizes of 129 and 94. 94 is under an inch. That's respectable for hunting, but not really for precision rifle. Although the 0.76 is not bad. That's getting close to where you want to be. And here the best 4 out of 5 was 0.90. At 2,550 feet per second, this was one of our better groups of the day with an overall spread of 0.67 and a best 4 out of 5 at 0.51 inches. So, uh, a four out of five grouping at a half an inch right there. And then at the 43.50 at 38.6 grains, that shot fairly well also. We had a 0.91 extreme spread, but our best four out of five was at 0.65 right here. And then with the 2600 feet per second at 36.4 grains, we had an extreme spread of 0.93 and a best 4 out of 5 at 0.59. And at 39.6 of H4350, we had extreme spread of 0.89 and a best 4 out of 5 at 0.52. So not a bad grouping there. But again, I've shot this H4350 powder. This powder can be shot up to 2,700 feet per second with this bullet. And that's where I have found my better loads on that particular powder. So this is primarily for comparison. And we're trying to zero in here on the Varget. And it looks like this load at 33.6 and 35.5, it looks like those shoot pretty well with best fry to five at 4.1 and 5.1. If you want to compare the group since we were shooting the same charge weight, well, since we were shooting at the same velocity for each round, just to compare, the H4350 had an overall group size, an average of one inch exactly, with the best four out of five at 0 0.70. Varget had an extreme spread of 1.02, with the best four out of five averaging 0.62. So, to me, this kind of looks like Varget has the edge here because if you average those two numbers, you're going to come out with a lower number here than you do over here. So here's a situation where even though your extreme spread is larger, your score is better here because your best 4 out of 5 was 0.62. And if you average those two together, you get a score of 0.82. Whereas if you average the one inch, which is smaller, and a 0 0.70, you get a score of 0.85. So in this case, the overall score for the Varget powder was better. So I believe I am going to do some additional load development with the Varget, with the Varget powder and this 140 ELD match. I'm going to start here and use that as a center point and work backwards to maybe 33.4, 33.2, and on this side maybe 33.8 and 34. Maybe down here, same thing, a little bit before, a little bit after, and see if we can zero in on some groups here.
So if you have any ideas or thoughts about this video, please feel free to leave a comment below. Or if there's anything that you would like to see in the future, please let me know that. I always try to interact with everyone who comments. And I hope that you will like and share this with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.